Welcome to everyone to episode one of The First Watch. My name is Andrew Coons. I'm the dungeon master for this adventure. Let's go ahead and meet our players. This is super exciting. My name is Benji. Uh, I'm playing Hide of Beast or Hide. Uh, I'm a tabaxi ranger beast master. So that's pretty cool. And then I have a beast companion named Luna and she's a dire wolf. And I'm super excited to play it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. My name's Melissa, and I play Sikia Thanthwe. She is a tortle cleric, and she does not have a, a direwolf. No <laughs> companion. No. But you're her companion. So. We have a plan. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess without any further ado, let's jump into the first watch. Gods have been silent for a millennia, if they ever spoke at all. For the last thousand years, the world of Shal has grown and flourished without prophecy, visions, or revelation. This, however, does not mean that magic is not present. Wonders and miracles are performed as a part of everyday life. Through the years, the source of this power has become a topic of debate. Clerics, paladins, and holy men hang on to sacred texts, insisting magic is a result of the gods' continued favor and presence on the world. Arcanists from across the land attribute such magics to a larger, less personified force of power, perhaps the universe itself. In Shal's northern hemisphere lies the newly unified kingdom of Alson. Alson is a collection of smaller countries brought together by King Ustaman a halfling lord who saw the encroachment of wild beasts from the south as an opportunity to bring the various provinces around him together. This unification was not met without opposition. However, as the largest state with the most formidable army, Alsan was not met with much resistance, and in the end, no blood was shed. This relatively peaceful unification has led to Ustman being hailed as somewhat of a savior and hero, though the farther from the coastal and central towns you travel, particularly to the south, the less benevolent this unification is perceived. But it is not in the capital city of Excessa, nor along either of Alsan's tropical coasts, nor in the heart of the kingdom that we begin our story. Instead, we find ourselves in the rocky and wooded south, in what was formerly known as Roderfell, before its absorption into the kingdom. Here lies the town of Ferreth. Ferreth is a moderate-sized town, boasting various farms, shops, and places of worship. It is generally unnoteworthy, as it does not produce any major crop or house any dynamic temple. Ferreth does have one point of interest in the kingdom. It is the home of Realmshield, the Monster Hunters Guild. Realmshield bastions itself against the rising tide of foul creatures pushing their way north into the heartlands of Alsan. Slaying wolves, hill giants, orcs, goblins, and more, the monster hunters are well regarded, if given a wide berth for their generally rough nature. For the last two weeks, loggers in the western weld near Ferreth have been terrorized by a vicious troll that has been picking them off in the night. A member of Realm Shield was dispatched to deal with the issue and did not return. Additionally, an interested and anonymous third party has placed a bounty on the beast and its carcass. With great urgency for both the sake of safety and coin, two more hunters have been dispatched to take on the troll. And that is where we pick up with the two of you. So That's us. We're the two more hunters. <laughs> so you find yourself about a day into tracking this beast, deep in the western woods. So you've stocked up on your supplies. Um, you know that you know where the logging camp is uh, to the west, and you've been making your way that direction. Um, and you did a little research on trolls as well, and you know that they are large, fierce creatures, quicker than you might imagine, um, and they are 
vulnerable to both acidic and fire damage. So you, you have that knowledge with you as you go forward. Um, you begin today by waking up, preparing yourselves and beginning the tracking again. So as we look into the woods, we see a black tabaxi with a shock of white dreadlock hair making his way sneakily through the forest. A large, imposing, but stealthy beast uh, in tow as Luna, your dire wolf, takes commands and moves with you. Behind them a little ways, uh, moving a little more slowly, is, is Sikia the tortle, making a little more noise than the others perhaps from time to time, uh, but still making her way. As you look to begin tracking this creature, how would you like to go about it? Siki, hurry up. But these we don't flowers, have all day. They're so beautiful. There's plenty of flowers uh, everywhere. I know, but these, these are like, these are, they're beautiful. Mm -hmm. I look around um, on the trees and bush, bushes to see if there's any like broken, uh, broken branches or anything to see if there's like a path. Okay, so you're, you're looking for signs of a path, signs mm -hmm. of tracks or anything like that. Go ahead and roll a survival check for me. Okay. Uh, 17. 17, okay. Um, as you're looking around, you do notice a couple places where there are broken tree branches, a little bit higher than what a normal sized beast going through would do. And that's what tips you off that this might be you know, shoulder height or something of the troll. Um, they are headed west and a little bit south, um, still in the direction of the logging camp, which you know that you guys are about an hour away from at this point. Um, but yeah, they're headed that direction. We're on our way. Okay. Follow me. Okay. Luna, be quiet. Let's go. You make your way through. Um, how are you guys going through the woods? Uh, stealthily. Yeah, I would assume stealthily, yeah. Stealthily? Okay, yeah. let's have everybody are you gonna stealth checks. Do you pass without a trace? Um, mm, not yet. I'm going to wait a little bit. That's going to be a... So you're rolling for both Luna and yourself? Yes. Okay. That's going to be a... 14. 14? Mm -hmm. It's going to be a 13 for me and a 24 for Luna. Wow. Okay. Nice. So... All right. You guys make your way uh, through the forest, Luna just slinking. For her size, uh, she is remarkably agile and just kind of cutting around trees and everything. She's a good girl. <laughs> Siki, you very slowly, foot after foot, kind of find your place. Um, Hyde, you actually have a couple moments where you, you break a branch that you weren't expecting. There's that, you know, sound. Um, not, not as stealthy as you would have hoped. Um, however, you guys go for another hour or so, and pretty soon the telltale signs of the logging camp. Uh, you see some cut down trees, a couple of places where paths have been have been made, and you guys know that you're on the edge of this camp where everybody had been uh, attacked previously. Do we know if anybody's still here? Like, did they go back to the town? No, they got attacked. Well, they right. Taken. All of them? Like, how many tents do we see? Like, how, how big do we think this operation was? You would know from just kind of general knowledge that it was, you know, a, a medium-sized operation that the last of the loggers had had come back crying out about a beast in the night. Okay, so uh, they are. It has been back. abandoned. At okay, this point. so there's no people there. We still. Well, not that you know of. But right, but no loggers it. necessarily. Not that, that you're aware of. Really. Okay. We need to be quiet still. Okay. But let's check. Okay. The camp. I'm gonna start, go to the left and start checking tents. Okay, so you guys are going into the camp? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I'm gonna tell Luna to stay back, not go into the camp. It's just gonna be me and Siki. And I'm going to the right, she's going to the left. Okay, so you're splitting to the left, you're splitting to the right, you guys are starting to check tents. Um, make a general perception check for me. Eight. Eight. Oh. Four. Four, okay. Oh Looks pretty abandoned. Um, you see a handful of tents, five or six, scattered about, um, various tools that are, that are scattered around as well. Um, but it, there's a haphazard look to things, like things just look like they were dropped um, as, as they were left and people fled. Um, so are you guys beginning to search tents or are you looking around the general area? I mean, I kind of thought I was like going to the tents and kind of peeking in. Sure. You know, different ones. Okay, so in that case, um, go ahead and roll an investigation check for me. Okay. Uh, 17. 17, all right. 
you check a couple tents. Um, mostly it's just bed rolls and basic supplies, nothing too exciting um, within. Uh, you do get to the foreman's tent, which is a larger one uh, than normal. Um, and as you peek in there and you start to begin rummaging about a little bit, um, you do see a small workbench, and on it are some papers and a leather-bound uh, book. Well, roughly leather-bound book. It doesn't look special by any means. Okay. But yeah. Can I look at the papers in the book? Mm -hmm. Do I recognize the writing? Uh, you don't recognize the handwriting per se. Um, well, but no, the you, language. Yeah, no, it's in common. Um, you begin to read through the, some of the papers, and it's you know accounts of you know ledgers and you know how much wood was gathered for a specific day and orders to fulfill. Um, the notebook itself, you open it up and you begin to see that this was the foreman's diary. Mm -hmm. Did you find something? Peek my head out of the tent. Hide, come here. Okay. I go in. Okay, so you head into the tent as well. Do we know how long ago um, the person came back and said that this happened? It's been about three days since then. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah, so I go inside the tent. What, what is it? What did you find? I found his diary. Uh, you shouldn't read that. Why not? He's not here. I guess he's dead. Never mind. What? You can he, read. He, maybe he's not dead. Maybe he's... Do I see any bodies around? <laughs> uh, you don't. Okay. Um... Yeah, no, Is there like don't. signs of struggle <laughs> or like blood or anything uh, anywhere? Not a, you, you could check for that specifically. Your perception checks weren't so great earlier. Okay. So. It's fine. It's um, fine. What, what does it say? I don't know. I haven't read it yet. Okay. I'm gonna open it up and oh. look at it. All right. You read the diary. <laughs> um, so you begin to thumb through the pages and it's, it's various, you know, this day was hard, I miss my home. Couple things that are just like, he's got weird habits around his toenails, like in keeping them, um, which is kind of bizarre. Why would you even write that on a I, diary? I don't even know. That's what you keep to yourself. Right, well, I mean, that's kind of what a diary is. I guess, I've never kept one. Really? Not even like in your head? That's called thoughts. Yeah, <laughs> I just think that. I don't, I don't well, yes, but it. then you put thoughts on paper. Yeah, I don't. That. But then they get out of your head. It's, it's such a relief. You should keep a diary. Maybe I'll I'm going to file it. that away for a gift idea. Okay, don't do that, but okay. <laughs> so you begin to read more, and as you get to the end, you find the very last entry, and it is written in a much hurried or much more hurried hand. Um, and some of the writing's a little bit sloppy, but it reads as such. We've been beset for days now by the foul beast. It first came at night and quietly carried off men one by one, so we lit bonfires around the camp to ward it off. Now it has grown emboldened and has begun attacking during the day, grabbing men while they work deeper in the woods. I, just, I caught a glimpse of it yesterday morning. It was larger than all the stories I had heard and moved incredibly fast. I've sent word to Realm Shield for assistance. Without help, soon we will have to abandon the camp. Perhaps we should have done so long ago. And it just trails off after that. How many men were here? I don't know. How many tents do we see? Uh, you see six tents. Um, possibly multiple men to a tent. Maybe 30, 40 at the most? 40 men? I don't know. There's <laughs> How many six people tents. can fit in a tent? Yeah. Two? Two people to a tent? Yeah. Are they small? Tents. Are they small like, tents? They're mediums. They're very in size. Are these like, I mean, like this kind of tent or like tent? Uh, somewhere in between. Some look like they like could maybe two get people. two people. Some look like they could maybe hold, hold four. So maybe twenty. I feel 15? like that's a generous okay. assumption. Okay. But Fifteen, twenty. Okay. And it's a large camp. It's yeah. I mean, it's about you know maybe a hundred feet wide. Um, it's like a clearing, you know, with the tents kind of scattered around the outside, um, and then a, like a big bonfire pit in the middle. However, you do see. Um, and it makes sense now with the context of the diary, you do see places on the outside of the tents where there are scorch marks from where other fires have been, have been built. Um, I'm, I'm gonna have uh, Luna just listen to see if she hears anyone like creeping on us or anything like that. Okay. Luna, listen. Okay, so roll a perception check for her. I believe it's with advantage because it's uh, for her keen senses. Yeah, she does have advantage. Nice. Oh, and her perception. Oh my gosh. Um, that's going to be a 25. 25, okay. Luna, God. Uh, 
and she kind of nudges in a direction, continuing western. What does Luna say? I think we have to keep going. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna have her smell around the camp to see if she finds anything interesting. Okay. Well, we'll consider that kind of part of the same. Okay. 25 that you got. <laughs> it's a pretty high roll. Um, she sniffs around a bit. Um, you do notice that she stops at a couple places, and as you guys get closer, you realize that the discoloration of dirt is not just darker dirt, but there are blood smears that are kind of through the camp. Um, and Luna kind of follows a couple of them into the woods just briefly and kind of comes back, catches the scent of another one, follows it a bit, keeps kind of circling back to you as those trails, you know, either go too far for her to feel comfortable going or trail off. There's blood. We know that. We gotta keep going before we hit the nighttime. Okay. Let's go. Okay. Uh, go ahead and make a survival check for me to continue tracking the troll. 20. 20, nice. Um, very quickly, with the help of Luna and following one of those blood trails, you find um, not only more broken branches, but actually one large fresh footprint. Um, and it is large. It is pointed in that same direction you were expecting, that west, slightly southwest uh, direction. Is it fresh? It, it, it's fairly fresh. I mean, it's, it's fresh enough to have left an imprint, um, but the dirt is starting to dry on it a little bit. We're getting close, look at this. That's a big footprint. It's that's like, crazy. It's like Shaquille O'Neal. Do you know who that is? I don't know who that is, but that sounds like a very big person. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, we're getting close, so we gotta be quiet now. Extra quiet. Extra quiet, right. Okay. And um, I pull out a little book that I keep, and I try to cast um, Pass Without a Trace. Okay. So you cast Pass Without a Trace. So let me have both of you roll stealth checks. And Luna as well, right? And Luna as well, and plus 10 to everything. Okay. Wow, Hyde is not doing well. 23. 23. Nice. That's going to be a 20 for Hyde okay. and a 30 for Luna. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Luna's <laughs> gone. She's, Luna she's the disappears. The <laughs> she disappears into the forest. And like legitimately, you guys, you don't even know quite where she is, except for every once in a while, she loops back. And it, it's almost that moment where she's just suddenly there and kind of checks in with you with a couple of and then kind of continues on. Um, and she kind of, a couple times you guys stray a little bit from the direction and she'll nudge you back towards that way. Um, another hour goes by and another hour of slowly picking your way through the forest in that direction. You do continue to pick up the odd bit of blood, the odd track, the odd broken branch. Um, about three hours in, it's a roughly noon at this point. Um, you are going through the forest and all of a sudden Luna stops and just freezes. I catch up to her. Okay. Sneakily. She's kind of just standing there like and looking kind of down in one spot. Okay, I try to put my eyes in the direction where she's looking to see if I can see what she sees. Okay, roll a perception check with advantage. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. You notice that in amongst the normal kind of roots and vines of the forest, there is a taut vine, very low but just about ankle height, that has been stretched across the path that you are following. Hmm. Smart girl. She found the trap, this one. Jump over it, Luna. And I make her, like, skip over the... the... You have her skip over? Well, not like a jump, but just kind of, like, carefully not step on it. Okay, so she steps over it. Over it, yeah, step okay. over it. Yep. And I do the same. We're getting really close now. Can, we, can I go around it? Uh, Jumping's not my forte. <laughs> okay. Can I go around Follow it? You, you go around it. Um, as you step over it, I need both you and Luna to make dexterity saving throws. Oh, oh shoot, no. that was not the right move. Oof. Okay, so Hyde got a 23. Okay. And Luna got a six. A six, okay. Mm -hmm. 
So as you guys step over, Luna kind of being egged on by you, uh, takes one step and then the next one hits something sharp and you hear her kind of bark out in pain. And you kind of being distracted by that, you see as your foot is coming down that in front of this tripwire is a series of tiny, kind of slightly covered by leaves, but series of tiny sharp spikes. It's like, st like stakes of wood that have been put into the ground. The purpose of which to trip and then fall on them. Uh, Luna takes damage. You kind of jerk out of the way just in time and take half damage, which will be... Uh, so Luna takes 11 points of piercing damage and you take five. As she, you know, kind of rears back and kind of begins to limp off to the side, kind of nursing her. Oh, I'm sorry, sweet girl. That's on me. Um. So they keep going, like the spikes keep going forward? Yeah, for about, you know, three or four feet. Okay. So easily avoided okay. now that you know where they are. Got it. Oh. You guys okay? What, what was that? Oh, you had the right idea. We had to go around. <sighs> and um, I'm gonna do cure <clears throat> wounds on, well, actually no, she's fine right now. Okay. We're just gonna. Do you, do you want me to, to make her feel a little better? Hmm. Do you, do you have a yeah. lot of space? Yeah, I've I don't got have something, yeah. Okay. Um. She's just a little hurt. There, there, Luna. I'm not gonna pet her, I'm just gonna be like, I'm gonna... I lift her paw a little bit, just so you can see I'm it. I'm just gonna tap it and uh, cast Healing Word. Okay. You tap it and say a Healing Word and go ahead and roll for that. Ooh, nice. Um, what is my spell casting? <laughs> uh, it's your Wisdom modifier. Wisdom, okay, that's wisdom. what I thought. Uh, that'd be six six points of healing back to Luna. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. She kind of tests it a little bit gingerly and <laughs> kind of kicks off and heads back into the forest. We gotta be really careful now. Okay. All right, you guys continue forward. Um, it's midday now. Um, however, the sun's not an issue as you guys are deep in the woods and it's kind of being cut off. Um, you guys need to stop for food, stop for rest. Anything you want to be doing along the way? All right, let's let's stop. Okay. Mm, right here. Can we? Can I find like a clearing that looks safe? Sure. Make a um, make an investigation check. Oh my gosh! Natural one. Oh no! All right. So you do find um, a nice little clearing that seems to be fairly safe. Um, it's a plus five. It's plus five, it's so it's six. Total. Yeah, no, it, this is a six point clearing, yeah. Um, so you, you you find this little clearing that has like a couple stumps where you guys could sit and take a moment to rest. Okay, this this looks good, right? right? Sure, yeah, if you say, if you say it's good. Right? Yeah. Luna. <laughs> yeah. What does that mean? That, that, that means yes. yes. Oh, that, that okay. means yes. Okay, yeah, sure. Okay. And I kind of sit on a log and I kind of pull up my feet and like kind of stretch, I'm like, ah, like stretch my shell a little bit. <laughs> I pull out uh, my rations and um, I just start munching on some dry meat. Mm -hmm. And I have some meat that I'll give to Luna as well. All right. So you guys take a moment to rest, to recuperate. In order to pick back up on the trail, go ahead and roll another survival check for me. Okay. Oh, another natural one. Oh no! Alrighty. Could I help him with this? Whoa, actually, really good survival. I, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> I, I. I mean, can I, can I roll would for that, something else? Would that just else? be like, me, like not knowing where to go? Can I roll like perception or something? Oh, go ahead and roll a survival check. Okay. I'm just like looking for like longer than usual. You know? <laughs> great. Seven. 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 Okay. Great crew. All right. All right. So here's what happens. You look back into the woods thinking that you found the right trail. Uh, you begin to kind of at a brisk pace take off that direction. Um, and you go a few paces in and then all of a sudden you hear a click. And I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Mm. This forest is not great. Uh, geez, that's a seven. A seven. So you feel a sharp bit of pain down around your leg. You take only a point of piercing damage as it hits some of your armor first, but a large bear trap 
that you did not see springs up and clamps onto your leg, holding you in place. Um, at the same time, you hear from both sides a rustling of noise as suddenly emerging, almost like melting out of the forest and out of the trees, these large vine-like entities begin to shamble forward towards you. And they seem to be composed of like writhing, writhering vines and leaves as one comes at you and begins to like put its head down and move a little quickly in your direction. Okay. All right, I'm gonna need everyone to roll initiative. All right, Hyde, so you find yourself caught right about here in a bear trap. As you kind of grunt out in pain, you see these entities kind of bringing themselves out of the forest on either side of you. Oh my God. You guys, my mini's so cool. Look at that. <laughs> Luna is back here as you rushed ahead without her and Siki, you are back here with Luna as well. All right, so 20, what'd you get? 11. 11. Siki? Two. Two. Oh boy. <laughs> Believe it or not, you just beat out the creatures. Really? <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Rolled a two with a negative one. Oh. <laughs> All righty, so Hyde, you are up first. Your foot is currently trapped. Your speed is zero. Okay. Until you break yourself out of that trap and the creatures are beginning to encroach upon you. Got it. Um, I am going to use my action to try to get out of the bear trap. Okay. Go ahead and make a strength check. Okay. It's not a saving throw, it's just Okay, a uh, 15. 15. You reach down and uh, the pull and it's just enough to uh, break it open. Uh, that is your action, uh, but you do have your movement left and your bonus action. And you are free of the trap. Okay, cool. Um, I'm gonna use my my movement to move 30 feet. Um, is that north? Is straight ahead? Would that be north? Uh, that would be west. Okay. Yeah, west. Yeah. Okay. So 15, yeah, that's right. 15, 20, 25, 30. Okay, and then I'm gonna whistle to Luna, and I'm gonna tell her to attack the guy to the. North. Okay, so you can use your bonus action to move her, but not to attack with her quite yet, because you have to take it as your action or like your second attack. But it would be my second attack. Your first action was not an attack. Got it. So got it. Got it. Got it. But okay. She no, will that move makes sense. Up towards this creature. Actually, let me reconsider that since she's not gonna attack. Okay. Um, can I have her just get close to me, like run as close as she can to me? Yes. And what is her speed? Her level? speed is 50, yeah. 50, so she can get up to about right here before that's the end of her turn. All right, that brings us to Siki. All right. Um, not knowing what these things are, I'm going to, let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna like, can I cast something and then kind of like hide behind this tree? <laughs> Oh, uh, you can't take the hide action. But no, I'm not going to hide, but yeah. like I want to like... Yep, you can move there. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to cast Sacred Flame on that one. All right. Is that a saving throw, I believe? It is Dexterity. Dexterity save? Okay. Uh, 17. Is that that's saving against... against... Your art, that's against your uh, spell casting. Spell save, yeah. Yeah, that's spell saves. save. Okay, so All it right. saves against it. Uh, let's see. I don't think it does anything if it's Yeah, I don't saves. think it takes any damage because it's a cantrip. Yeah. All right, so you kind of whoo, out with the sacred flame and the creature, like it's slow, but it tend, but it just kind of moves out of the way just in time. And the sacred flame kind of bursts in the air right next to where its shoulder was. And then I'm just gonna hide behind this tree okay. and pull out my um, war hammer. All right, so you ready your war hammer behind the tree for your next Seeky action. Seeky heads up, we have three vine-like creatures. I've never seen this before. Yeah, I see them. I don't know what they are. Mm. All right. So, now it's the creature's turn. Um, let's see here. They are going to shamble forward slowly, much slower than you would have expected. This one's going to get to about here. 
That one's gonna get to there, and it's just barely in range for Luna. This one is gonna come around this direction. All right, so the one that is where Luna is, is going to try to constrict her. So that is a nine to hit. Nope, that, that does just... not hit. So it reaches out towards her to try and grab onto her, but she's actually just barely out of reach and its arms kind of come up empty. Um, the other one, let's see here. The one at the top of the board there is going to attempt to use entangling plants. So in a 15 foot radius around it, everything becomes difficult terrain. Um, Luna needs to make a strength check. Uh, 16. 16, so she's fine. So it's still difficult terrain, uh, double movement to move through it, but she is not entangled by the roots. All right, that'll end their turn, and I'll bring us back to you, Hyde. I'm going to turn around to the guy that's closest to me. Okay. And I'm going to Hunter marks him. All right. He is marked. And release an arrow. So that is your bonus action to Hunter's Mark, and then your action. Okay. So that's going to be a um, 22 to hit. That hits. Go ahead and roll damage with your Hunter's Mark. Actually, no, it's just plus five. So it's going to be seven plus five. That's 12. 12 points of damage. Nice. So you sink an arrow deep into that one. It kind of disappears within the vines, but you see the creature kind of go and kind of like, you can see you did some pain to it. And then Luna is going to turn around and bite at the vine creature that's behind her. All righty, go ahead and roll an attack for Luna. That's going to be a uh, 21. 21 hits, go ahead and roll damage for Luna. Okay. And get there. And that's with your plus three as well for your proficiency. That's right. On top of her stuff. Mm hmm. So it's gonna be true. It's so broken. <laughs> uh, that's gonna be 11. 11 points of damage. Nice. So she whips around and kind of bites deep into it, uh, kind of actually grabbing onto the hand that had just missed her as it was trying to grab her. And she snags it. Um, it needs to roll a strength check. That's right. Correct? Mm -hmm. okay. Is it a saving throw or a check? Uh, saving throw. Saving throw. Okay. That is not going to do it. That's a 10. Okay. So it is, is thrown prone right there. Good job, Karen. Prepare another arrow. You get ready for your next shot. Sikia. All right, so there's difficult terrain. 15 to foot around here. it, so 5, 10, 15, like okay. up to there. I just want to move over one, so okay. I'm not in that, but yeah. so I have a clearer shot. And I'm going to cast Firebolt. Firebolt, go ahead and roll an attack. Let's see. Uh, 21. 21 definitely hits. Nice. Would you consider this flammable? Uh, unfortunately, it is not flammable. Isn't it it's made out of leaves. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. All right, so that's 12, 12 plus, hold on. Oh, no, it's just 12. I don't add my thing. Um, so it says a flammable object hit by this spell ignites if it isn't being worn or carried. Right, so it's not an object. It's a creature. Right, but it's pretty. <laughs> but it's made out of leaves. It's made out of leaves. <laughs> you see the firebolt go for it and <laughs> like burn this huge scorch mark into the back shoulder of this creature. And you do see it kind of <laughs> and like burn some of the vines away, but it does quickly kind of go out and just kind of leave this charred hole as the creature kind of <laughs> and begins to kind of shift in your direction. Oh no. All right, and then I'm gonna use the rest of my movement to back up behind the tree. Okay. You duck back behind the tree. Where are you going? I'm hiding! Okay, that makes sense, I guess. All right, that brings us to the creatures. This one has enough movement to get up to you, and it is going to make a strike against you. Uh, that is a 16. That hits. That does hit, all right. So you take six points of bludgeoning damage and you are currently grappled. As it strikes out at you, and as it hits you, 
vines kind of shoot out from around the fist and wrap themselves around your body and just kind of hold you there. All right, this guy is going to use half his movement to stand up, the other half to get kind of closer to Luna and is going to take a swing at her. And that is an eight, so that will miss. And this last one is turning towards you and it's gonna come that direction. So, question, if it's yep. difficult terrain, wouldn't he be slowed in his movement? Um, for non-plant creatures. So he, he is, it's his spell, he is kind of one with this. And you actually see, as you kind of peek around the tree, you see him kind of like move and the vines tend to like spread out of his way as he kind of comes through. All right, so that'll be, let's see. Well, no, he's gonna use his action to dash and get a little bit closer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is the end of their turn. That brings us back to Hyde. Cool. Um, I am going to call Luna to help me. Okay. She's going to. So Luna turns around. Um, and gets and we're going to flank. So. Okay. So she's going to use her movement to get around. Easy enough for her with her speed. And I'm gonna use my uh, my short sword, my short sword, okay. to hit him. All right. Go ahead and take your attack with advantage. Awesome. That was a natural one on the first one. <laughs> uh, that's going to be a twenty-two. Twenty-two hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Cool. And it's still hunter's mark. Mm-hmm. Actually, I'm sorry. Hunter's mark is concentration. So I do, so since you took damage, I do need you to roll a, con a, con a concentration check. So it's a constitution saving throw. Okay. DC of Saving 10. throw, constitution. Oh, I got seven. Seven. So Hunter's Mark has dropped. Okay. But it's a bonus action, right? So it I is. can cast it again? So you can burn another spell slot. Hmm. Let, 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 let me see if I want to do that. Yeah, I'll do it. Okay. I'm gonna cast it again on him. And then I'm gonna strike him with my short sword and yep. it hit. And you hit, yeah. Uh huh. So that's, uh, let me, I usually don't do that. Okay. So that's going to be a 10 plus. Okay. Nice. One, two, four. Uh, 14. Where's the d4 coming from? Oh, Hunter's Mark is a d6. It's a d6. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. Well, that helps. Oh, that was better. <laughs> uh, so what, 13. 13 points. All right. Mm -hmm. You hit out at it and with your short sword, you chop a big chunk out of it and you see like its form beginning to fall away. And it's not quite done, but it looks pretty hurt. Okay. And uh, Luna is going to bite at it. Okay, roll an attack with Luna. And with advantage, right, because we're flanking? Mm-hmm. Okay. That's going to be, what is she? Um, oh. Uh, 21. 21 hits. Cool. Five. Is two D sixes. That's gonna be five plus eight. That's uh, 23. No, 13. Sorry. 13. As you have stabbed it now and slashed it with your sword and you see it begin to fall away, all of a sudden from the other direction, you just see a snout come through as Luna is kind of ripping it to pieces and from the back end just shreds the thing and it just goes flying into pieces of vine all around the, the forest floor around you. Dope. And one thing, when she left mm -hmm. that guy's uh, range, would yes. she have gotten opportunity attack? She would have, thank you for okay. reminding me. Mm -hmm. Fair play. Fair uh, play. That is a 14, so. That misses. Misses, not a big deal. Alrighty, that brings us to Sikia. All right, I don't like when, this When thing. the creature falls, I look at Luna and I'm like, good job, girl. Give her a little wink. <laughs> I don't like this thing chasing me. So I'm gonna like run at it and use my Warhammer. Okay, roll an attack. All right, 16. 16 does hit, yes. Nice. Total rage. <laughs> Ooh, an eight on a D8. Nice. So nine bludgeoning. Nine bludgeoning damage, awesome. So that would be... All right, so you reach out with your Warhammer and just boom and break, like break a huge chunk off. Um, you see bits of vine go like flying and like hit other trees in the area. Um, yeah, you did a nice chunk of damage to it. Nice. And then I'm... Uh, no, I'm gonna hang on to my bonus actions for now. Okay. So I'm just gonna stay there. So that'll end your turn. That'll bring us to the creatures. 
This one, let's see, five, 10, can't really get up to you. So he'll dash and get up to you, but can't do anything. Um, that one is going to strike out at you, CQ. Natural 20. So you take 14 points of bludgeoning damage. Oof. And you need, uh, nope, you don't make a, a, a check yet. You are grappled, and so you are restrained. Okay. So your speed is zero. Point of order, your attack should have been at disadvantage, which means that Luna would have given you canceled out because you were restrained as well. But I, I okay. forgot that, so we're totally fine. Okay. Yeah, we'll keep moving. And it was like 15 plus eight, it was like 19. Yeah, 15 but the 19. first roll was a natural one. So oh, okay. it technically should have, oh, but that's fine. Right. We'll just. We, we know now. We'll we, move forward. We learn what we mistakes. Yep. <laughs> that benefit me. That benefit, yeah. Hey, as long as the mistakes benefit the player, like, who cares, right? Okay. Uh, so, yep. So you're grappled and restrained, and that is the end of the monster's turn. So, hi, you are up. Cool. Um, question for the DM. Can I have her take her attack before I take my attack, or do I have to make my attack first? I believe you need to make the attack first. Okay. Because she's taking it as the follow-up attack. Okay, yeah. got it. Um, I am going to use my short sword again. Okay. And uh, slash him. All right, go ahead I, and make I don't attack. have Hunter's Mark, that's nope. okay. Oof, um, that's going to be a 15. To 15 hit. does hit, go ahead okay. and damage. Cool. Six points of damage. Okay, six points of damage, nice. Another slice, more vines hit the floor. Mm -hmm. And then Luna comes running and tackles him and bites him, or tries okay, to tackle yeah, him. Okay, yeah, he's gonna try and bite and throw him down. Go and roll an attack. That's gonna be a uh, 15. 15 does hit, yep. Cool. And that's gonna be... He'll make his strength getting throw. That's gonna be a 15. 15 points of damage? No, wait, sorry. <laughs> 13. 13 points of damage. That makes more sense. Nice. Well, the, the grapple or the, the throw is not an issue as that creature is bitten apart by Luna as well and kind of just goes scattering into vines along the floor. Mm. That brings us to Siki. Good girl. All right. So I'm grappled, but I can still attack, correct? You can, just at disadvantage. All right, we'll try it anyway. Okay. Use my bonus action to turn my warhammer into a magic weapon, and I'm gonna attack again. Alrighty. So. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> uh, Eleven. Eleven just misses. No. So does the magic weapon give you a plus one? Oh yes. So, twelve actually. Just hits. Good. <laughs> just yeah. hits. Just right. so. Awesome. So you actually <laughs> bring the warhammer down, and as you see that it's going to miss, at the last second you channel some energy into it, some arcane slash divine energy, no one's really sure with you, into the warhammer, and it pushes through the last bit of vines and attacks the creature. Nice. So yeah. go ahead and roll your damage. All right. So that and would it's be... plus one there as well, to yes. whatever it says. So that'd be eight. Eight total. And it is enough. As you hit it, you all of a sudden see this spark of energy go whoo, through the creature and it explodes in front of you. Nice. And you, Hyde, turn around and just see a, an explosion and standing in the midst of the rubble is Siki, breathing heavy, holding the war hammer, which is now glowing. And it is going to stay glowing for a little while. Okay. I believe. Check. Yeah, one hour. <laughs> so for the next hour, it is yes. glowing. Yep. I go, um, I hop on Luna, and I make my way towards Siki. Okay, you get on, move over quickly. Hey, we're getting good at this, huh? Hey, yeah. All right, <laughs> professional bounty hunters. Yeah. We're so good. By the way, what were those? Uh, forest creatures. Well, monsters. In, right, they're monsters, but like, have you ever seen what, them before? What I know. Uh, I'm, I'm, a, the forest is my familiar. Yeah, make a make a nature check, and I'll, I'll say with advantage. Nature. Oh, it's just a check. Um, Nineteen. Nineteen. Yeah. Uh, these are vine blights. These are vine-like entities that have been infused with magical essence for some reason to kind of give them form. There are different types of blights. There's needle blights, twig blights, um, each kind of with their own nasty set of skills. 
they're they're a blight blight. They're they're light? Blight. Light? Vines uh, brought to life by dark magic. Uh, mm-hmm. So are there any of them left? Like are there little vines? Uh there's yeah, there's like vines kind of all over the place, but they seem to be devoid of life at the moment. Okay. Give me just a minute. I'm gonna pull out the diary that okay. I took. I'm gonna like flip to an empty page and I'm just gonna give to like a rough sketch of what they looked like. Okay. Yeah, you take a moment so, to kind of sketch like, down. Is it good? Is that a good drawing? I don't know, is it? <laughs> make a make a performance check. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I'm not a bard this time. <laughs> <laughs> Five. Plus? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you squint really hard and, like, and have the context, some, like, what, what, are you, what are you trying I'm, to I'm making, draw? A, I'm drawing a picture. That looks like vomit. I mean, that's kind of what they look like. I, I feel like yeah. it's artistic. Interpretation. You know, exactly, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm not much mm. of an artist, so I'll trust no, that's your okay. judgment. Yes, I have very good judgment. Mm. Mm. Okay. Okay. I'll have uh, Luna just kind of sniff around the bodies to okay. see if there's anything special. Uh, yeah, make an investigation check. 19. 19? Nothing special. Just binds. Cool. Nothing on their person. Okay. Alrighty. Okay. So, let's keep going. Yeah. I'm, I'm just going to sit and listen to see if, if there's anything like around anyone listening, anyone watching. Okay. Make a perception check. 15. 15. Listen for a moment. We're not alone. That's not good. Um, before we get going, I'm going to, uh, let's see. I'm gonna do healing word on myself. Okay. So you cast healing word. Go ahead and mark that off. I'm gonna do it at second level. Second level, okay. All right, how much did you get back? Uh, seven. Seven points of healing, all right, mm-hmm. awesome. Hyatt, as you're kind of standing there listening and hearing some noises, all of a sudden there is a rush of noise that comes from your left and a blur of movement as suddenly out of the woods, moving at an incredibly fast speed and slashing out at you the troll appears, so mm-hmm. he's gonna get a sneak attack on you. But if I was listening, round. if I was listening, would I? Would that still? I'll happen? say, I'll say for this roll, roll a one-on-one initiative to see if he gets to you first. Okay. Oh, natural twenty. Nice. nice. Okay, yeah. So he rushes out and he's coming at you quick, and you um, don't have time to get out an arrow or anything, but you do have time to duck out of the way. So he's still gonna take an attack at you, but it's gonna be a disadvantage. Okay. And that is going to be a 14 to hit. That misses. So that misses. So he goes wide. He continues by before anyone else has time to move, and he disappears into the forest on the other side. Wait, he just like ran through? He just ran through. What? Took a slash at him and, and kept going. Hide. What was that? That was a troll. That's what we're looking for. Should we go get it? I listen again. You hear crash. <laughs> I hop off Luna. Okay. And I turn towards where I hear the sounds and I ready my bow. Okay, make a, uh, make a perception check. 22. 22. So you hear it and you hear it start to move in a different direction. It gets quieter, then it gets a little bit louder, then quieter again, a little bit louder. It's, it's hard to, you can tell that it's moving, but it's hard to track exactly where. Okay, I still have my, my bow ready. He's moving around us. Keep your eyes open. Okay. Everything goes silent for a moment. You hear a tearing noise. Almost as if, you know, like, like. And then you hear footsteps coming closer, closer, closer. You look, and coming from this direction, you see a shape, but it, it's not just a troll. There's something else. As the troll appears towards you, carrying oh, a, a large, tr- 
trunk of a tree, a dead tree that it's picked up out of the ground and is bringing it towards you guys. And as you look, all of a sudden it rears back and hurls the thing at Ziki, you. Ziki, watch out. Duck! And I shell. It comes, ooh. Okay, nice. <laughs> you go into your shell. Yes. So you go prone into your shell to avoid it. Yes. Uh, the, the tree comes hurtling towards you guys, kind of hitting the ground, crashing and bouncing. Um, I need you to make a dexterity saving throw for you and Luna, um, and you as well. Oh, well, that's Oh, snap, bad. I should have waited. <laughs> <laughs> that is bad. Because I know you are a disadvantage now. Right. That's going to be a nine for me, and that's going to be a <clears throat> well, two six for Luna. Okay, so everybody fails <laughs> their decks <laughs> <is>. miserably. <laughs> you all take 10 points of bludgeoning damage. Is it an AC to hit or just dex? It's just a dexterity saving throw, mm-hmm. and then you get hit. However, with you being in your shell... My AC went up. It, well... It's more, it's not the AC specifically, it's more just like what you're, what's getting hit. Mm. Um, I'll, yeah, I'll give you half damage. So you take five points Okay. Um, from being in your shell. You take 10, Luna takes 10. You just got in your shell. And this... Just hiding. <laughs> ...goes here, and you guys are knocked prone and pinned. Oh, snap. Underneath the tree. Okay. As the Ooh. troll begins to rush in towards you guys, I need everyone to roll initiative. That's terrible again. <laughs> Same. Um, got 13. 13? 10. 10? Somehow you guys keep beating out these monsters, even with crappy <laughs> initiative rolls. It had a nine, so nice. All right, so the troll is beginning to advance on you guys very quickly. You guys are pinned underneath a tree at the moment. You're still in your shell, uh, and the tree is kind of resting on top of your shell. Hyde, what do you want to do? Okay, I uh, I command to Luna to lift with me with her with her shoulder, and I start to um, attempt to move the tree off of all of us. Okay, make a strength check with advantage because Luna's helping you. Ten. Ten. You push, push. Nothing happens, you can't quite get it over. It budges just a little bit and you can't get it off of you. Mm-hmm. 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 That's your action. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Siki, what are you doing? Um, what can I see at this point? Can uh, I see what landed in your shell? And, mm, like would there be any branches kind of hanging out? Or? It, it, between being in your shell and the thing on top and everything, you, your vision is obscured. You, can't, you can hear things happening, you can hear the troll rushing towards you, but you can't see anything well. Okay, well, I'm just gonna yell. Hide, what happened? Tree on top what? of all of us. That's it, I'm gonna stay in my shell. Okay, you're gonna stay in your shell. <laughs> the troll is going to use his cow. <laughs> 35, he's gonna dash and use his action to dash and get right up to you guys. Um, as he just comes in and, and you, he, again, you guys are pinned. You can't even actually see it coming with, between the tree, but you can hear it get closer and closer and the snarling noises that it's making. Hi, it's your turn. Okay, lift again with Luna's help. All right, strength check with advantage. 13. 13 total? Mm-hmm. Push, it's almost there. Not quite. Freaky ever. <laughs> Oh, fine. All right, now remind me again. It's an action to go into the shell. It's yep. a bonus action to come out. Bonus action to get out, so you okay. can pop out and try to push off. Okay, I will do that. I will pop out and then try to, to push. Okay. Am I trying to push the tree off bo- off of like all of us, or am I just trying to push it off of me? What do you want to do? Um, I mean, I want to get loose, but I kind of want to like push the tree that way. Okay. You know. Go ahead and roll a strength check. Just regular strength check. Uh, 17. 17. You pop out of your shell, plant your arms and legs, and use your total strength to push up. The tree pops off of you, still pinning Hyde and Luna. Do I have any movement left? You do have your movement. Okay. But you Um, use your bonus action and your action. Would I get better cover from the actual tree or from this tree? Uh, that's up to you. 
I mean, his focus is on this tree, correct? Yeah, it is. He, he okay. seems to be rushing towards I'm going to use half moon movement to get up then. Okay. And then 15 feet. I'm just going to like hide over here. Okay. Hope he doesn't see me. Sounds good. <laughs> the creature reaches down and grabs your legs and begins to try to pull you out from underneath the tree. Um, make a um, athletics check to essentially try to resist him. Yeah, and I mean, I'm hanging on to a yep. tree too. Yep. Athletics, you said? Athletics, yeah. Okay, great. Um, 18. 18 versus 18. Oh, so, what does that mean? So he doesn't pull you out, but you don't get free either. Okay. And you guys end up kind of gridlocked in this tug of war pattern uh, for the next round. He was trying to help. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, that will bring us back to you, Hyde. Cool. So, so your, your feet are now grabbed yeah. by it. You, mm -hmm. you would, I mean, you're double grappled. It doesn't right. really do anything specifically, but like you're pinned by the tree and you're grappled by sure. it. Sure. So I have a question. Since I'm preoccupied in this, can I command Luna to try to bite if the creature is close enough or the troll is close enough? Um, with the way the tree has pinned her, hmm. like she's pinned with her head on the other side. Okay. So, so I'll, she I'll, I'll, I'll attempt for Luna to get out since I'm already like, and I don't want to get loose because he'll gotcha. pull me. So I'll just- Roll a strength check for Luna. Okay. That's really so bad. Uh, nine. Nine. Actually, sorry, that's a nine out of six. Uh, Twelve. Twelve. She tries to push, can't quite get there. It's starting to wriggle free a little bit, but yeah, isn't able to make it. It's a heavy tree. It's a heavy tree. <laughs> All right, Siki, what are you doing? Is is that considered a um, celestial elemental fae or fiend? Um, it is not. Not any of those. Not any of those. Okay. Um. Hmm. Celestial troll. <laughs> right. Uh, I didn't think it was that glowing. one. <laughs> it's a halo. Amazing. Um, so I'm going to use bonus action to cast Shield of Faith on Luna. Okay. Um, so that gives her a plus two to her AC. Okay. You want to so. drop that little ring on Luna for me? <laughs> the best you can. We'll get her <laughs> she, if she ever gets out. And I'm going to firebolt the troll. Okay. So you're going to come out from around the tree a little bit? Just a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Maybe like... <laughs> okay, and then Fireball the Troll. Fire Go ahead and roll your attack. All right, 18. 18 does hit. Nice. Okay. Ooh, nine, seven. Um, so that is 16. 16. For for the spell that you cast on Luna, is it just the AC? That's it? Yes. Okay, yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. All right, that brings us to the creature. It's going to continue to try to pull you out, so another uh, strength check or athletics check for you. Uh, athletics, 10. 22. Oh so he God. grabs you and rakes you out from underneath the tree. And ah, pulls you out. In the, in the process, you take another six points of tree scraping damage. Mm. <laughs> Oof, that's Splinters. the worst kind of damage. And that is his action, but he now has you by the glade, so you are still grappled. Mm -hmm. um, you're not restrained anymore, but you are grappled. And uh, yeah, he's he's got you. Is he, does he have me by the legs? He's got you by both the legs, kind of okay. like at your With ankles. both hands? Yep, both hands kind of okay. by the ankles. Cool, got it. Good. So I am going to take out my short sword and try to stab him in the stomach. Okay. Would that be a disadvantage? Uh, it would, yeah, it would definitely be a disadvantage. Okay. Great. Awesome. That's going to be a 12 to hit. 12 misses. So you try to stab up, but you can't quite get up at him, uh, and you don't find purchase with anything. Don't have the core strength. And uh, I'm going to try to get out as Luna. Luna's trying to get out. That's a uh, seven. Seven. She's staying in. <laughs> oh, she can't so get bad. out. No. All right, Siki. All right. Um... <laughs> I can see his balls from here. <laughs> Please help me. Okay, hearing that, I'm going to poke peek out around the tree again. I'm going to cast Guiding Bolt. Okay. So that is 4d6 Radiant. Well, you got to roll your attack first. Oh, right. Nope, sorry. Yeah. Hold on. Do that first. Uh, 23. That hits. Go ahead and roll mm -hmm. damage. 3, so 6, 
10 and one more. <laughs> Seven. Wait, 10, 11. So 11 points of radiant damage. Nice. And the next attack roll has advantage. So I'm going to use my bonus action to cast Spiritual Weapon. Okay, so you cast Spiritual Weapon. Like the leftover pieces of like the vine blights and everything, yeah. I want them to kind of like, look like it's kind of like coming out of the ground, like all these vines and everything, sort of swirling up into a giant war hammer that's gonna try to knock him on the backside. Right, so the, the energy from the vines and the, the surrounding earth kind of coalesces and comes out and swirls and turns into a war hammer. So no. It goes right behind him, and go ahead and roll your attack. All right. Oh, please hit. Okay. With advantage. Oh, yes, that's right. Good. Better. 17? 17 hits. Good. Okay. This was two, eight. Eight points of damage. Nice. And that's force damage. Force damage. All right. Gotcha. All right. That brings us to the creature. You see some of the damage that you just did with the guiding bolt it's kind of stitch itself back up on him all right he is going to take three attacks against tide he's going to try to just pummel you into the ground uh, the first one is a 15 hits that hits that is five points of piercing damage as he bites down on your leg. Okay. And then he slashes you. He lets go of you and slashes with both of his claws. So I'm on the ground now? You're on the ground prone okay. still. Okay. Um, the first one is a 12, which Nine misses, six. I believe, and another 15. That hits. Okay, that is 11 points of slashing damage on that strike. <laughs> still up? Yes. Okay. Arguably. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh my god. That will bring us to you, Hyde. Okay. Um, I am going to use. You have a potion, right? Mm hmm. I do. I'm going to use my turn to cast Cure Wounds on myself. Okay. 1d8 plus 3. Sweet. It's going to be 11. Nice. Take 11 points back. I'll stand up, uh, and with the rest of my movement, I'll... Oh, never mind. I don't want to disengage. I don't want to move from his range. So I'll stay there. Okay. So you'll stay there with and face off with him. Yeah. All right, Siki, you're up. Okay. Um, I'm going to run... If I go to this side of the tree, can I try to, like, pull it off of... You can, yep. Off of Luna? Okay, so... 10, 15, 20... I'm going to try to pull it off of her. Okay, make an athletics check. Athletics? I don't think I've done that before. Hmm. Nine. Nine. Well, not quite there. No. Not quite able to lift it, no. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to bonus action cast Mass Healing Word. Okay. So, and what's the range on that? <clears throat> 60 feet. Okay, yep, you're fine. I mean, I'm assuming the mm -hmm. kind yep, of the line get in front of you. you. Um, so that's a d4. Oh, well, three points back to everybody. <laughs> okay, three points of healing. All right, that brings us back to the creature, which you see the wounds on it start to stitch up even more. Oh, no, I forgot about that. Oh, you got him too. I know. <laughs> uh, he's going to then take a bite at you. Wait, no, I didn't. Hide. Okay. Love my choice, yeah. And that is a natural 20. <gasps> that's not good. 12 points of bite damage, of piercing damage from the bite. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then he's gonna take a claw strike. That's a 25. That hits. That is 16 points. I'm unconscious. Of slashing damage. All right, so you go down. Uh, the troll then, instead of taking a last attack, he's actually gonna grab your body and just kind of throw it out of the way. Um, you go kind of flying over this direction. You fail one death save from the impact. Mm. Uh, and he then turns his attention to Luna, who is pinned underneath. Um, while you're unconscious, you can maintain control of Luna, uh, just you as the player. Um, okay. But her sole purpose when you're unconscious is to protect you. Right. So mm -hmm. she's gonna do whatever it takes to do that. That's right. All right, She's that brings good. us to hide, so I need you to roll a death save. Oh my god. 16. 
Okay, that's a fa- that's a success. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> it went up. Homebrew. That seems to be natural twenties. <laughs> It's a tough campaign. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, but then what would Luna like to do? Um, she's trying to, she is going to try to get up to get next to me. Okay, so roll a strength check. Oh, natural 20. Natural 20. With that mom, like, lifting a buzz strength. Yeah, so you know? she senses you go down, and with every bit of her direwolf strength, just shoves the tree off of herself. Siki, you have to take a step back as it kind of falls off, and she's free to get up. Okay and she's going to dash past the troll and just get right in front of me. Okay, so she uses half her speed to move, stand up. Mm-hmm. And she has 50, and so that's 25. She's got, and then with the dash, that's she's mm-hmm. got plenty, so she and she's gonna positions get herself right next to me. Right. Just, uh, All right. Does she take an attack of opportunity, or? Um, I'll say that everything's close enough that she stays within his melee range. Yeah. Um, okay. So no, she does not. Sounds good. All right. The other thing is she could have gone around and then to there, so. Sounds good, okay. Ziki, you're up. Okay. You've seen Hyde go down and Luna Mm -hmm. shove the tree off and go protect him. Okay. Um, So I'm gonna bonus action healing word towards Hyde. So that would be D4. So six points back. And I'm going to... um, Let's do Sacred Flame. Sacred Flame on the troll. Mm-hmm. All right, that's a dex save. Yes. It is a 10. No, so a fail. he fails. All right, so that's going to be 2d8. So that would be 11 points of radiant damage. Okay, 11 points of radiant damage, nice. And I'm going to stay behind the tree. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that seems like a good idea. <laughs> the radiant burn mark from the Sacred Flame heals back up. Mm. As it's radiant, not fire damage. Even though it's sacred flame? It's a it's a radiant flame. It's a, it's a uh, spiritual flame, not actual fire. Gotcha. Did you get him with your spiritual weapon too? Oh no, you did that for the cure. Yeah, the bonus action was cure, was a healing word. So, he's going to turn towards Luna and take a bite at her. Remember she has plus two yep. to. Mm-hmm. Yep. That is a like 18. That misses. Right. Thank you for that. And then his claw, first claw attack is a 19. That hits. That hits. Eight points of slashing damage. Okay. And another, or no, a 16 that time. That misses. So that misses. So he only gets one strike on her as she's kind of, you know, dodging some, and, and the the kind of arcane or the divine shield around her catches one of the blows and stops it. Okay. So that brings us to you, Hyde. Uh, you are conscious now with, what was it, four or seven hit points? Six. Six hit points, okay. Uh, so what would you like to do? I would like to use Luna to stand up a little bit. Okay, half her speed. Mm-hmm. And then from behind her, I'm gonna take off my bow and shoot at his ugly face. Oh, attack. I'm gonna Hunter Marks the... Okay, Hunter yeah, Marks bonus the action, Hunter's Mark. <clears throat> Great. Then, let's see if I hit. So mark that spell slot as well. Yes, thank you. And that's going to be a 22 to hit. 22 hits, go ahead and roll damage. 15. 15 points, nice. All right. Sink an arrow right into his clavicle, and it's still stuck there, just kind of sticking out as he (laughs) roars at you. And then Luna sees that I'm up, and then she pounces, and she's gonna bite at his abdomen. Okay. Uh, that's a 26. Definitely hits, yes. <laughs> so she angry. She sinks his, her fangs into his gut. And you see blood begin to drip out. Nice. Uh, so that's gonna be 13 points. 13 points of damage, nice. All right, he is not looking fun right now. Hmm. All righty, that brings us to Siki. Okay, so while I see them, him attacking them, I'm hiding behind the tree. I'm gonna yell, "Yo, ugly butt!" <laughs> I'm gonna cast Firebolt at him. Okay. <laughs> cast Firebolt at the troll. Go ahead and roll your attack. Natural twenty. Natural twenty. <laughs> nice. All right. So roll your dice, double right. them, and then add whatever modifier there is. So tens. Okay. Is that zero ten? Yep. Okay. So that's fifteen thirty. Yep. Thirty points. Thirty points. <laughs> 
Holy cow. All right. Um, so that was action, bonus action. I'm going to try to hit him with my spiritual weapon again. So he is reeling from this massive firebolt that he took in the back. Uh, you bring in the spiritual weapon. It swings in, go and roll an attack. Uh, 13. 13 misses, unfortunately. So he's kind of bobbing and weaving from getting hit in the back with that firebolt and the you can't quite get the, the trajectory of the, the hammer right and it misses. Woo, he is not looking fun. All right, that brings us to his turn. His wounds do not regenerate uh, as they were burned into him. Um, he kind of looks around and he kind of looks at you, Hyde, and look at Rosh, and And then he turns and begins to run away this direction. Uh, Luna does get an attack of opportunity if she wants. Okay. That's going to be a 14. 14 just misses. So she snaps out at him um, and unfortunately just catches air as he's quick enough to get out of her out of her reach. Cool. Uh, I'm going to hop on Luna. Okay, he's 15 feet to Mount Luna. Yep, and I'm gonna chase after him. Okay. Easy enough to do, easy enough to catch up with him. Cool. And uh, while I'm on the on Luna, I'm gonna take out my short sword and try to stab him. Okay. So go ahead and roll an attack. Nice. Uh, Seventeen plus. Seventeen. Yeah, that definitely hits. Mm -hmm. So you reach around uh, and actually get up close enough to him with Luna's speed to like reach around and go to stab him in the abdomen. Mm -hmm. um, you hit him and you feel the your blade sink in deep. Roll damage. Dope. And Hunter's Mark. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a 11. 11 points. Nice. Um, and since I'm with there and Luna's busy keeping up, I'm just going to try to swing at him again with okay, my Okay, you pull back, swing again up into his gut. Mm -hmm. Natural 20. Natural 20. All right, go ahead and roll damage. Uh, eight. Eight points. Nice. Not quite down, but pretty darn close. Okay. He's really starting to look rough and he's bleeding all over the place. Uh, yeah, Siki, it's your turn. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna try a firebolt again. Okay, you'll probably need to come out from the tree a little bit yeah, in order fine. to get that's visual of him. Five, 10, 15 ish feet or whatever. Yeah, probably about 20 feet to get there. Sure. Yeah. All right, so firebolt uh, 17. That hits. Damage. I believe it's 2d10, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, so 17. 17 points. All right. Uh, Siki, how would you like to kill the troll? Ooh. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to see Hyde chasing after him. I'm going to come around from the tree and just yell again, like, hey, troll! And I'm going to, like, firebolt. <laughs> And it hits him as he's already reeling from the two strikes from, from Hyde. And the troll rushing at someone and falls over. Nice. There's a loud thud in the air, and then the forest goes still again. Okay, so I'm gonna run off to Hyde. Yes. You okay? Yes. Thank you for, for the healing and the protection. Mm -hmm. That really helped. And I'm going to check on Luna, make sure she's okay. Yeah, she's a little beat up, but she's doing okay. She's fine. Is he um, really dead? I, I think so. Okay. And I'm, I'm just going to take a moment to check. Yeah, make a, make a medicine check. I know a lot about medicine, you guys. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's not breathing. He's not moving, and the wounds aren't healing up. That's all pretty obvious stuff. So, best you can tell, he's dead. Okay. And how big is this troll? This troll is, is considered a giant-sized uh, creature, um, or a, a, a large creature of the giant type. So he's, I mean, he's a good, you know, 10, 12 feet tall. Uh, he's a big boy. Well, let's get the stuff from our contract then. And here is the contract that you were given. Ew. All right. So I pull out the, the bounty from my, from my bag. All right, it says, interested party looking for dispatch and recovery of troll carcass. 
report of trolls to the south of the western weald, rewarded a hundred gold with proof of death, that's the head. A mm -hmm. hundred and fifty gold with recovery of hand, foot or any limb. Two hundred and fifty gold for recovery of entire carcass. Bounty by Jasper. Mm. Can we get this whole carcass in my knapsack? Um, I don't think so. Big, it's a big <laughs> it's very big. Body. He's a big boy. <laughs> okay. I, I take off um, my sword and I start cutting like his head. Okay. Um, make a uh, make a strength check to kind of saw through it. Uh, 15. 15? That's enough. Yeah. It takes you a minute, but you finally get the head off. Okay. I'm going to use my dagger and go for the arm or hand. Uh, yep. Make, a, let's say, you can make strength checks as well for, for going after that. It was 14 on the strength check. Yeah, that's enough. You can you can add troll hands, feet, or whatever else you're going after. Okay. And then the head. We have that. Yeah. 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 Does that fit in our bags or are we going to have to carry that? The head itself is pretty massive. Um, you will probably have to, to carry that separate. It does have kind of this long dreadlock type hair that makes it fairly easy to grab onto, but it's pretty heavy. Okay. Did, did you hear him saying something? Yeah. What, what was he saying? Did you understand I, it? I, I don't, I couldn't understand it. I don't speak troll. But it, I don't either. It, it sounded different, right? Not like a, like a scream of war or anything mm -hmm. like that. It sounded like pain I mean it makes it sense. sounded like like words mm -hmm. you know instead of just grunts or something right right hmm. I don't know we should ask people about it when we get back to town you guys pack up your things and heal your scrapes and <laughs> begin your trek back to town your couple days journey that it'll take but after a couple days of travel camping um, you do eventually see the kind of hill that um, Ferrith is built upon come into view um, and the, the the small wooden wall that realm shield has constructed to help kind of uh, keep things from the south at bay um, you guys are home all right with a troll head with a troll head with a troll head <laughs> and that's where we'll end the session today and pick up again with you guys returning to Ferrith. awesome nice awesome troll fight